Let's go to the ring now. Set for the introductions. From Pensacola, Florida, the cradle of Dave O'Leary and the home of the whitest band in the world. This is your main event. Your referee from Hialeah, Florida, Mr. Bill Connors. Introducing the principals first in the blue corner. Wearing today the black trunks with the white trim. Weighing in at 151 and one half pounds. From Chicago, Illinois, with a professional record of 16 wins. One to beat, one draw, six wins by knockout. Please welcome Storman Ron Amundsen. Amundsen. His opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the silver trunks with the black trim, weighing in at 155 pounds, from Pensacola, Florida, with a professional record of two wins, no defeat, both wins by knockout, here is Roy Jones, Jr. Referee Bill Connors out of Hialeah, Florida, brings the uh, two the boxers, boxers together. Instructions in the back room. Now we're going to have a clean fight. Any questions about anything? Okay. Press gloves. Listen to my commands. Good luck to you. Scoring out of the 10-point must system, handled by the three judges. There's a mandatory eight. No standing eight count. Okay. Three knockdown rule is in effect. The bell does not save the fighter in any round. So Roy Jones in his third professional bout going against Ron Amundsen who is a member of the Church of the Latter-day Saints, thus his nickname, Stormin, derived from Stormin Mormon. He does Mormon missionary work in Chicago. In fact, Ron spent two years doing his formal Mormon missionary time in Seoul, South Korea. That was back in the early 80s. His one defeat last September, Amundsen lost a 10-round decision. Did not look good against Davey Hilton in Atlantic City. Knocked down on the 7th and nearly went down on the 10th when Hilton broke his jaw. Hilton could punch. I think he was overmatched too soon. They put him in as just fodder for uh, Hilton, and I think that was a mistake of his manager. was just trying to survive in that fight, and he admitted he was mentally intimidated, rather candid uh, for a boxer. He said he was overmatched, should not have gone against Hilton. He was right. There's nothing like a broken jaw to give you clear vision as to your uh, chances. Amundsen not noted for hand speed and needs a stationary target. Roy Jones is certainly not that. Oh, he's anything but a stationary target. He's chosen to open, has Jones, in a very slow fashion. Usually comes storming out. He's just being very patient here. Roy Jones, usually very difficult to hit because he steps in, throws a quick three-punch combination, and then it's gone before his opponent is able to fire off. We have not seen that to this point. Well, he's fighting a very slow fight, and he's just keeping a distance between uh, he and uh, Ron Amundsen. Strong uppercut by Jones, and then immediately lowers the hand and goes to the showboat tactics. Now that's funny. In the previous bout, every time Hobson showboated, they booed him. They cheered this guy showboating. He must be a big favorite around here. Is Roy Jones, Jr. Jones is booze reminiscent of a man he admires greatly, Sugar Ray Leonard, with that low guard and fast hands approach. Style fluid, but keeps the hands very low. Well, when he punches, he's got some thunder in his punches. Right. Jones scoring with the combination. Amundsen's face is getting all red, starting to just show signs of lumping up as these punches, infrequent as they are, are very hard on the part of Roy Jones Jr. Seconds, round one. And 
this is round two. Roy Jones in the silver trim with black. And Ross Amundsen in the black trunks. Again to show Bunny, he grabbed the rope and he didn't get warned by the referee, Bill Connors. Hobson touched the rope and got <laughs> reprimanded for it. You saw the weights on the uh, tail of the tape right before the uh, start of the fight. Jones at 155, Abbott's at 151 and a half. Many boxing people at the weigh-in thought the scales were off by as much as four pounds. Abbottson, as we said, at 151 and a half, but he said he actually weighs 156. So if that's correct, uh, Jones is closer to 160. And this is a uh, junior middleweight uh, bout. Calls for some uh, interpolation by the boxing commission. If they all weigh on the same scale, just deduct the four and keep on going. What you're seeing here is a very, very big difference in hand speed. When Abinson tries to come in and punch, just as he gets his punch off, a zinging shot is coming back from Roy Jones. Abinson looking to uh, show both, attempting to throw it. Jones off. Bert Abinson is actually club fighter status. Over his head here against Jones, against the speed and, and reflexes of Roy Jones. Remember, this is a man has had 18 fights against Roy Jones' three fights, and that gives you an idea of what statistics mean. Nothing. understand that here everyone is convinced that Roy Jones can step in and fight for the title by the end of this year not next year and uh, when you see uh, these kind of performances they fool you because it's uh, not quite equal talent what happens when he steps into somebody good well, that is the, uh, the current field of champions IBF and Franco Rossi WBC junior middleweight uh, title holder John Mugabe and the WBA champion is Julian Jackson of the uh, Virgin Islands well, at this point, I, I could never see Roy Jones step in with Mugabe. <laughs> not at all. And, and maybe not Julian Jackson. I think Rossi would have a chance with Pumping body shots. Strong finish for Roy Jones in the second round. And this is round three. Roy Jones and Ron Amundsen. From the hometown of Roy Jones, Pensacola, Florida, we're at the uh, Civic Center. And Jones opening up with the solid rounds one and two. In spite of the tail of the tape, which wasn't that different, to me it looks like he's much bigger. I mean, forget what the tape says, he's bigger than the other guy in everything, in talent, but in size he's bigger. Here's Jones. Roy Jones, the youngest member of the United States Olympic boxing team. He was awarded the Val Barker Cup as the outstanding boxer of the games. That seemed like an acknowledgement of guilt by the international uh, boxing officials after he had lost to a Park C. Hunt of Korea, losing the gold in that uh, highly controversial decision. Oh, those hooks are really doing some damage. Jones' hooks are very, very hard. And right on target. It was a beautiful hook. And when you aren't watching, the uppercut does a lot of damage as well. We are halfway through the third round. This is scheduled for eight. puncher just when he fires off two or three you think he's through out comes another couple and those are the ones that do the damage Whoa. and the warning from the referee Bill Connors 
This has settled down to hard fighting. Very little hot dogging. As Jones has come to work. It looks like he is determined to knock out Amundsen after a very kind of quiet first round. Jones now using the jab effectively. Amundsen forced to cover up. Anytime he comes close, he gets hammered to the body, to the head. here in round three. Abbotson throws some basketball fakes at him, but they don't do any good. This is boxing, and he is getting hammered. Well, there seems to be satisfaction in the corner of Roy Jones. He is handled by his father, Roy Jones Sr., one time in a way to fall of the 60s and the 70s, and faced Marvin Hagler in July of 1977. Losing to Hagler, a bout that was stopped in the third round. Jones got hit, did a little posturing, and then returned with two or three slamming shots. <laughs> right now, his punches are way too wide on Roy Jones. He's got to get down to pinpoint punch, and he's gotten sloppy now. Getting used to easy pickings, he is throwing those long arm shots which will not work when he gets in with top competition. <laughs> Minute gone by, this is round four. Scheduled for eight. Does Ron Adamson take a, a good shot? Or uh, is it a question of the uh, punching power of Roy Jones perhaps not being as strong as advertised. The first part is true. He takes a good shot. The second part is you haven't seen Jones's power yet because he hasn't dug in to throw sharp, crisp punches. He's been throwing these arm punches and showboat punches. When he gets down, look at the way he keeps his left hand down. Jones does. When he gets down to digging those toes in and really punching, then he does knock everybody out. Look at that. He left his feet on that punch. You know, you look down in that corner, it was all black and silver. Did it remind you much of the Raiders? Which are wherever they're going to end up? No. <laughs> A strong body shot by Roy Jones. demonstration you cannot substitute for reflexes and hand speed and a very sharp combination by Jones Amundsen on the other hand is strictly an arm puncher with no no power and slow the deadly news is he's slow Amundsen just took a big deep breath his arms alone indicating nice weariness Ten seconds left in round four. Look at that lunging thing. It looks like a, an aircraft leaving an aircraft carrier. He almost went into flight with that punch. It didn't land, and it, if it had, it wouldn't have done any damage. Have to, you know, we don't want to, but it's after resort. Have to resort when you have up in between you and him. And that is Roy Jones Sr. talking to his son. Ron Amundsen, very quiet, soft-spoken when he came to Pensacola last month to promote this fight. The local promoters wanted him to make negative remarks about Roy Jones to help encourage ticket sales, but they were disappointed because... All Amundsen would say is that Roy Jones is a fine fighter, a wonderful human being, and he promised to pray for Roy. The religious background, uh, he seems to subdivide it very well. Inside the ring, he blocks that out. Outside the ring, he's a very religious and sensitive man. A man who did more than missionary work 
in Chicago and spent uh, two years in Seoul, South Korea doing his formal uh, missionary time. Ron Atkinson out of Chicago where he was a, a four-time Golden Gloves champion. Well, right now we're getting about to that point in the fight in an eight-round fight. What a combination by Jones. And follows it up effectively, but Atkinson remains standing. We've had no knockdowns. Jones now pouring it on as we hit the halfway mark of round five. Jones getting serious about this knockout thing. There's no steam in Abinson's punches. A right hand that just grazed Abinson. And getting to the body of Jones. A strong left hand by Jones. Absolute frustration on the face of the more experienced fighter, Abinson, who thought he could keep the pressure on and neutralize Roy Jones. Roy Jones has taken his pressure and turned it back on him. Abinson was nailed by a hard left hook by Davy Hilton last uh, September. Hilton broke his jaw, and Abinson is getting nailed continuously here in the fifth round. Uh oh, that's the first sign of hot dog. He's sticking your tongue out. Final seconds of the fifth. to round six. Arv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Roy Jones coming off a very powerful fifth round. What does the fight doctor uh, scorecard tell us? I have a total shutout. Uh, 50 to 45 in points quite unofficially, but I don't think anybody in his right mind can give one round to uh, Ron Abinson, who has been taking a boxing lesson and a shellacking. When did you send those trucks that Jones has to the cleaners? You re chrome them after every fight. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, first two decent shots, and Abinson has landed in rounds and rounds. At this, at this point, with Ron Amundsen, what a display of speed and punching ability! You get the feeling that if he just dug down and started to really punch hard for a knockout, he'd get it. But Amundsen dis displaying an admirable grit and uh, ability to take this kind of punishment of a—I guess you get that what you call a missionary zeal. You can take just about anything if you want to. He's very, very determined. Oh, I'm very familiar. You're talking about step back from We approach one minute remaining in the sixth round. You think that Jones's lack of clowning Basically, you know, so is a sign of his maturity coming to, to pass, or has he just been so busy he didn't think about it? What do you think? Well, I, I was surprised that he uh, came out as he did in round one. He usually uh, comes out in, in hot dog fashion, and he looked like he was uh, ready to do business. And then where he got his confidence, he did begin, begin the clouding. And yeah, perhaps that is the reason that he's taking it a bit more, more seriously. His first professional uh, bout here in the... Pensacola had an easy time with 31-year-old Ricky Randall. There was too much uh, hot dogging on the part of Jones. He's certainly serious this time. It's been precious little of the showboating that we saw before. Boy, that was a hard right hand. 
And that did have knockout on it. We'll be back after these messages. Back at the Civic Center in Pensacola, Florida. Roy Jones having his way an easy time against Ross Edmondson, although there has not been a knockdown, although it has been purely Jones from the start. He has pitched a total shutout here. And when you look at uh, the display he's putting on, and you look at the uh, Olympians of uh, the 88 Olympians, you have to compare him to Andrew Mater, who certainly has about that much quality and strength, and also uh, Michael Carvajal. I, I don't think Roy Mercer belongs in that group. He's very hard punching, but he's not um, hes not a, uh, a boxer. He's a slug. Do you feel Roy Jones has the most talent? Out think, of that group? I think he's right in there tied with Carvajal and with Andrew Maynard. Michael Carvajal is a fine little fighter. Jones is currently attending Pensacola Junior College and will enroll at the University of West Florida next year. He did uh, take some time away from college to train for the uh, Olympic trials and then the Olympic Games in Seoul. Time to repair the uh, glove has a little bit of tape. That's about the only mercy he's going to have. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And the repairs by uh, Georgie Navarro in the corner of Ron Admanson. Navarro, a featherweight contender, stopped by Jeff Cunning in a uh, title fight last year. case was rare in that he uh, broke uh, many bones in his, in his hand, retired, and then uh, setting the record for below the fighter retirement, he's back. He's out. As soon as his hands healed, he said, I'm back. Ooh. A tan by Jones to the chin of Amundsen. With one minute remaining in the seventh round, the pounding continues. Edmondson is tough. His head snapped back. You would think that he would show damage, but he's still there and there fighting. Earlier here on Sport. before he finally went down because his head was snapping back. That's usually the sign that you have no more control and down you go. And he did. So Roy Jones makes it three for three as a professional. Record of three and all. All three by knockout. And you can place the name Ron Amundsen alongside 